Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, Mr. Vice President of the European Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, Mr. Vice Prime Minister, Viorel Stefan, Mr. President of the European Economic and Social Committee, Madam Senator Kretu, Mr. Uh, Jonkman, Vice President of the Commission for Economic Policy, European Committee of the Regions, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, welcome. I'm honored to moderate the opening session of this conference. I welcome the presence in Bucharest of our distinguished guests, senior officials of the European institutions, EU member states representatives, as well as representatives of the EU level stakeholders. As a representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that through the Minister Delegate for European Affairs has the responsibility to coordinate at national level the issues related to the European semester, I wish to express my appreciation for your interest in participating in this conference, which is part of the series of events taking place during the Romanian Presidency of the Council of the European Union. On behalf of the organizers, allow me to thank to the high-ranking officials who are with us today. At the same time, I would like to thank the European Institute of Romania for the support in organizing the event, as well as to, host, to the host, our National Library of Romania cultural establishment with 160 years of history. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, today's event gives us the opportunity to exchange views on the functioning of the European semester and to look to the future in the attempt to highlight defining elements of the process in the context of the new institutional and budgetary cycle of the European Union. Moreover, the conference aims at bringing into debate the developments in the European semester, lessons learned and examples of good practice, starting from 2011, the year when its first edition took place. In this respect, I have the pleasure of inviting His Excellency Mr. Valdis Dombrovskis, Vice President of the European Commission and at the same time Commissioner for Euro and Social Dialogue, also in charge of financial stability, financial services and capital markets union to open the series of speeches of the opening session. Mr. Vice President, you have the floor. Uh, Honourable Mr. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, um, uh, Honourable uh, Panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for this uh, invitation here to this uh, beautiful uh, building that houses the uh, National Library of Romania. The architectural style is uh, uh, unique, a perfect blend of classical and modern, like a mixture of past and the future. Uh, this uh, mixture of past and future is uh, a little bit as a theme of uh, what I would like to talk about uh, this morning in relation to the European semester. Let me start with the past. Uh, early on, policymakers in Europe recognized that a strong single market must be supported by close coordination of economic policy. Economic and monetary union uh, brings our economies even closer, which is a good thing. But EMU also increases the risk of uh, spillover effects. Um, uh, the fact is that uh, this lesson was uh, not taken to the heart in the first uh, decade of the new millennium. By the time Romania joined the EU in 2007, dangerous macroeconomic imbalances had been uh, allowed to build up in many EU member states. Uh, the uh, effects became apparent soon after when the full extent of the economic crisis began to unfold. The European Union responded with a range of measures to increase our capacity to fight crises when they happen and to better prevent them via stronger financial supervision and sustainable fiscal and macroeconomic policy. It was in this uh, context that we developed the European semester which has reinforced economic and fiscal policy coordination at EU level, allowing us to detect imbalances at early stage and address them before they escalate. Uh, in designing the European semester, we recognized early on that success will depend on three things. Uh, the first is quality analysis. We need proper assessment of economic challenges and possible responses at the EU level. 
Uh, we have maintained since the start of this mandate the focus on three priorities. Boosting investment, structural reforms, and responsible fiscal policy. And we see that this strategy is working. Uh, quality analysis also requires good knowledge of member states' economies, which means drawing on expertise from a range of sources, both internal and external. Uh, behind uh, uh, every paragraph you see in one of our country reports, uh, there are pages of analysis that you do not see. Uh, the second element is communication. For the most of our recommendations, the fact is that there are no legal penalties if the country does not comply. They rely on soft power, which means success depends on how well we communicate our analysis and how much we take up stakeholders' reactions to improve it. Uh, as part of this effort, uh, uh, myself and other uh, commissioners visit member states. We engage in dialogue with uh, governments, uh, uh, but also parliaments, social partners, and other stakeholders. The final and most important element is ownership. Delivering on reforms is not easy. It often requires confronting a powerful vested interests, so to succeed, country has to be truly committed. Uh, I know this uh, from my own experience. I was uh, uh, Prime Minister at the time when Latvia needed deep and difficult reforms. Uh, we had the support of guidance of our EU partners, but at the end of the day we succeeded by taking ownership, together with the Parliament, with social partners and other stakeholders. Uh, this is why the European semester is built around maximum degree of ownership. It is a European Council that endorses the recommendations and Member States monitors the progress through peer review. And all these efforts uh, have paid off. The semester is working, even if it does not always uh, get the credit it deserves. Uh, on average, 70% uh, of country-specific recommendations issued by the Council under the semester since it was launched has seen at least some progress to date. Uh, on the fiscal side, when uh, this Commission took office in 2014, the average deficit in the EU28 was 2.9% of GDP, now it's 0 08 uh, At the same time, we have to acknowledge that momentum is slowing. There are even some cases uh, when countries are backtracking on past reforms. Uh, it is also worrying that some countries are not using good economic times to reduce high levels of deficit and debt. When the economic cycle will change, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, when it does, countries uh, that have not completed structural reforms and have not restored fiscal buffers will be the ones most affected by the downturn. Uh, turning to our analysis for Romania, uh, it is important that the economy and people's living standards further converge with EU average. Uh, strong growth in recent years has increased the country's uh, gross domestic product from around 39% of EU average in 2006 to 63% uh, in 2017. Uh, but this trend will only uh, continue if further efforts are made. Uh, we are worried about recent loss of competitiveness and widening current account deficit in Romania, which may uh, pose risks for continued convergence of the country. Uh, uh, because of these uh, imbalances, uh, Romania is re-entering macroeconomic imbalances procedure in a current cycle, despite having left it two years ago. Uh, at the same time, uh, fiscal policy has been expansionary uh, even after years of strong economic growth. Last June, the Council found, for a second year in a row, that Romania has not taken effective action to correct significant deviation from its medium-term budgetary objective. Uh, likewise, reform implementation has uh, weakened. Uh, in the country report published this uh, February, uh, Romania is assessed to of having made only limited progress or no progress on all recommendations issued by the Council last year. Uh, this uh, concerns uh, recommendations uh, ranging from issues like the fiscal framework and tax compliance to uh, social dialogue and outcomes for uh, uh, Roma to improving health care and the quality of public administration. Uh, all this is uh, happening in the context of mounting uncertainty in the global economy. Uh, our best defense against these risks is to stay on the path of reform and fiscal stability. 
This brings me to the future of the semester. Uh, one recent uh, trend is that the semester is becoming more social. And uh, this is something I expect to continue. The European pillar of social rights sets out the compost con for continued upward social convergence, and the semester is a key tool for delivering on the pillar. Our goal must be to ensure that growth is fully inclusive and that be it benefits uh, everyone in the society. It's also very relevant in case of Romania, as Romania has one of the highest uh, uh, income inequality levels in the EU. Another forward-looking change is enhancing EU-level support for implementing reforms. Uh, this is why the uh, Commission has proposed the building on the current structural reform support program, which provides technical support for reforms. Uh, in Romania alone, uh, the program has already supported more than 40 projects, ranging from helping to establish a national promotional bank, uh, to modernizing the delivery model of the health uh, service, to building a system that helps disadvantaged children stay in school. Uh, in the context of next multiannual financial framework, we have also proposed a new instrument, the Reform Support Program, which is currently being discussed as a basis for a possible euro area fiscal instrument. Of course, the appropriate balance between euro area and non euro area countries will have to be struck. Uh, another innovation is to strengthen the link between our semester analysis and the use of EU funds. Uh, this has already started with the publication of our country reports in February. For the first time, the reports include a section which identifies investment priorities. This will be used as a basis for discussions with member states on programming of structural and cohesion funds. Not to add more bureaucracy or obstacles, I would stress, but rather support member states in the programming of funds. Uh, again, to take the example of Romania, the country report identified a broad range of investment needs in research and innovation, in road and rail transport infrastructure, in the design of active labor market policies and anti-poverty uh, uh, anti -poverty policies, and in urban and rural development. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's easier said than uh, done. And it takes uh, uh, time before you reap the benefits of structural reforms. But to borrow a Romanian expression, ceea ce semeni, to ceea ce culei, means uh, you harvest what you sow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. We have retained an important element, the idea of taking ownership. And I'm sure that through constant dialogue with the Romanian Commission, uh, Romania will be able, and the Romanian authorities will be able to, to streamline that uh, common ground that will make us uh, have a win-win situation in this case as well. Uh, in order to hear uh, the point of view of the Romanian government on the issue under debate, I have the honor to give the floor to Mr. Viorel Stefan, Vice Prime Minister of Romania. His Excellency pursued a career as an economist and held the position of Minister of Public Finance. He also served as a member of the Chamber of Deputies, including Chairman of the Committee for Budget, Finance and Banks, and Senator, respectively, between 1996 and 2008. Mr. Vice Prime Minister, you have the floor. Dear Vice President of the European Commission, dear President of the European Economic and Social Committee, dear Madam President, dear Vice President, distinguished guests, it is my great pleasure and honor to be the first representative of the Romanian government who takes the floor in this event dedicated to an important process at the level of the European Union, but still insufficiently known among European citizens and even the media. I refer to the European Semester, which is the framework for the coordination of economic policies across the European Union. 
I appreciate the initiative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs through the Minister for European Affairs and with the support of the European Institute of Romania to organize this event under the aegis of the Romanian Presidency of the Council of the European Union. I truly believe it is proper to have an ample debates on this matter to involve all relevant stakeholders, it is equally very important to bring these discussions as close as possible to the European citizens. I welcome the presence of the representatives of the European institutions, the representatives for, uh, from the EU member states, the social partners at European level, European employers, associations, and trade unions, as well as the representatives of the national institutions, academia, and civil society. We are attending a special event dedicated to the European semester, and the mere fact that it is organized by the Romanian during its rotating presidency proves the importance our country gives the, uh, to this process. Ladies and gentlemen, the European semester will soon be celebrating a decade. The semester was launched in 2010 at the initiative of the European Commission and with the approval of the European Council amid the global economic and financial crisis. We were at the that time at the end of a strategic cycle represented by the Lisbon strategy, the results of which have been severely affected by the economic crisis, and today we find ourselves again at the end of a strategic cycle represented by the Europe 2020 strategy. The EU economy registered lately a constant growth which also meant better results in the implementation of the Europe 2020 strategy. However, given the cyclical nature of economic development, we must be prepared for periods of recession and contraction of the European economy as a whole and implicitly of our national economies. Since I'm an economist, in my view, one of the indirect but essential roles the European semester has is precisely to prevent or mitigate the effects of potential economic crisis. By targeting a sound economic governance and increased coordination of member states' economic and budgetary policies, in line with the provisions of the Stability and Growth Pact, by the annual impetus provided in the annual growth survey to structural reforms and investment in the member states, by incorporating the European pillar of social rights, with its implication for stimulating employment, increasing social inclusion, developing the skills of European citizens and productivity, all documents and the whole architecture of the European semester are already milestones for national institutions in developing, implementing, and monitoring public policies targeting sustainable, smart, and inclusive growth. Country-specific recommendations and country reports issued each year by the European Commission are important milestones in the European semester and are useful tools for EU member states to guide their economic and social policies. At the same time, the fact that country-specific recommendations are discussed in the thematic committees and approved within the bodies of the Council of the European Union and subsequently endorsed by European Council, but also the fact that the country reports have been submitted by the European Commission starting with 2017 to the Member State. For these comments and proposed changes is evidence an open dialogue-based approach 
among the stakeholders involved. Let us not forget that the European Parliament also organizes each spring a week dedicated to the European semester, attended by national parliament members. The Committee of the Regions and the European Economic and Social Committee are also involved in analyzing the socio-economic aspects addressed in the European semester. The large number of European and national stakeholders involved in the process show us both the magnitude and importance of the European semester with an increased dynamics in recent years following the approach initiated by the European Commission in 2015. The European semester has been linked to the Economic and Monetary Union the European Pillar of Social Rights, and the connection to the EU budget is about to be strengthened. Consequently, the European semester has developed over time, and all indications show that the process will also evolve in the next EU institutional cycle. It should be pointed out that this year we will have a new European Parliament as well as a new European Commission. It goes without say, saying that these European institutional stakeholders will also leave their mark on the, on the semester. I consider it important for the European semester to remain relevant and effective. We should continue with a beneficial and consistent dialogue between the member states and the European Commission. We should avoid overloading the process, which could lead to decreasing its effectiveness. Political control of the semester of, at the highest level should continue, and at the same time, a clear line of demarcation between the technical and political level should be drawn. In the last few years, we have also noticed the tendency for the semester to contain more and more elements and consequently its trend to become a burdensome and complicated process with a busy calendar difficult to follow. In view of the above, I believe that today's event could have a quadruple role. First of all, this conference should be a platform for dialogue ex and exchange of ideas and experiences among all stakeholders involved in this process. Secondly, almost 10 years after the launch of the process, this event could be a good opportunity to conduct an evaluation of the process, to reflect on its evolution, to, uh, the implications and obstacles encountered, the benefits of the process and, why not, the impediments faced in achieving the objectives of the semester, both within the, the European institutions and at the level of the European member states and regions. Thirdly, the conference can provide itself a framework from reflection on the future of the European semester both in terms of the role of the stakeholders and the complexity of the mechanisms involved and of its calendar and its ever close link with European funds in view of the new next multi-annual financial framework. Finally, yet importantly, I mentioned in the beginning of my speech, I think that the European semester is little known to the general public. Our conference should be an opportunity to explain this process through and with the help of the media. The people should understand its objectives and role, be aware and acknowledge that beyond the inherent bureaucratic aspects, the European semester aims at increasing the competitiveness of the European economy and the well-being of EU citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the motto of the Romania Presidency of the Council of the Union, European Union 
is cohesion a European common value. According to the current discussions, the European semester would be closely linked for the future multiannual financial framework 2021-2027 and the architecture of European funds and more specifically to the cohesion funds. Thus, we can say the, that the European semester we have a role not only in coordinating the economic policies of the member states and preventing macroeconomic imbalances, but also in reducing the development gaps between the states and regions of the Union. This link entails increased obligations and commitments for structural reforms, especially for the newer EU members, both to access and make effective use of European structural investment funds and implicitly to close the development gaps with the older members of the Union. Achieving convergence and cohesion must remain an objective of the entire European Union. Let me assure you that Romania is making every effort to accomplish these objectives and that uh, since its accession in 2007, gross domestic product per capita in purchasing power standards has risen from around 40% to 63% of the EU average in 2017, ranking Romania among the top three convergence performers. However, at the end of the Europe 2020 strategy cycle. In a world increasingly affected by political instability, economic protec protectionism, and geostrategic unpredictability, the European Union lacks a medium and long-term strategic development vision with clearly outlined priorities and goals. I have all the confidence that the EU leader, leaders who will meet in Sibiu at, on the 9th of May this year, will outline an EU strategic agenda that will shape a common future for our member states sharing the same values. Regardless the, of the approach and whatever the new EU development strategy, I believe that the European semester will continue to play an important role in coordinating our economies and in the development of our societies, but also in achieving the annual fine-tuning requirement to implement successfully this strategy. I kindly thank you for your attention and I wish you to have successful debates. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Prime Minister. Fully recognizing the importance of an active involvement of civil society and decision making at European level, I give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Luca Jahie. He's the President of the European Economic and Social Committee. Since 2018 and member since 2002, Mr. Jahie is an international political analyst, expert, author of essays and contributions for specialized publications. In his program as president of the EESC, the greatest emphasis is on the sustainable development, which should support all the transformation that will shape the Europe of tomorrow. Mr. Jahie, you have the floor. Thank you so much for this invitation, dear my Vice Prime Minister, dear Vice President of the Commission, dear Madam President of the Special uh, Committee of the Parliament, the Romanian Parliament. Since its creation eight years ago, the European semester process has become more and more important for the European Union. It is now an extremely efficient economic and social governance tool, both for the European and national institution. The European economy is now on the right track. Of course, it is not growing at the rate we hoped, but we should recognize that it is now moving in the right direction, not least thanks to the European semester, and I am fully prepared 
to recognize and to acknowledge the efficient role of the European Commission in this process under the leadership of the Vice President Dombrovskis. However, more can and should be done, especially when it comes to social inclusion and to creating decent standards of living and decent works for a maximum of people. DSC welcomes several elements of the Commission Annual Growth Survey of November 2018, such as reforms to increase high-quality investment and productivity growth, inclusiveness and institutional quality to ensure macro financial stability and sound public finances, to strengthen the EU social dimension and the prominence given to the social pillar, but also the need to invest in education and training. However, the committee would like to see more concrete proposal for achieving these objectives. We know that the progress is low and proposal often too modest in area where new policies have been proposed, including fair taxation, the banking union, and the functioning of the euro area. We have also to say very clearly that if you look at the reality of European countries, all successful reform processes promoted by European semester have strongly included not only the social partners, but also civil society in a wider range. There is indeed a clear need to increase the participation of civil society in the process of elaboration and implementation of the country-specific recommendation. We need to raise awareness and mobilize national civil society organization. This was already our goal in the frame of the Lisbon strategy, but it become even more important now that Europe 2020 is coming to an end and we need to move forward. We should also improve the link of our work with regional and local levels of government, and in this case, the role of the community region should be further highlighted. DSC has closely followed the semester since the very beginning. Before the semester existed, DSC already worked on the old Lisbon agenda together with the national ESC and similar bodies. Since then, our main goals have always been the same, to integrate the voice and added value of civil society in the process of defining which are the key priority for the society. In this sense, it could be essential to create a common framework for all the member states when it comes to consultation. This framework should efficiently integrate all the stakeholders, employers, trade unions, and all other civil society organizations. It could also be very important to create guidelines to make the process of consultation more effective where it does not work. Because we have to recognize that in too many member states, not enough stakeholders are consulted in a meaningful way, and not early enough. I would like also to underline, uh, en passant, that in many member states, unfortunately, even the national parliament are cut off from this process or are consulted only at the last minute. This does not work, and it has to be improved. Because, at the end of the day, this could create misunderstanding, opposition, and leave too many floor to the usual suspect that are accusing Brussels to be the bureaucratic imposing the process when this process has been decided altogether by the Member State, by the Council, by the European Parliament. But we need to do much more in the process of including. Proper and real consultation of the stakeholders are essential. Their involvement offers suggestions, comments, as well as criticism that at the end of the day further improve the process the quality of the result, and ensure a proper and concrete ownership. I remember when the President of the EU Council, Herman Van Rompuy, asked the ESC to examine the possibility to develop the social dimension of the EMU. This led to the setting up of the non-binding, unfortunately non-binding, social scoreboard. So the recent inclusion of the European Pillar of Social Rights in the ongoing semester cycle is definitely a positive sign. However, other parameters should be considered in this process, such as climate change and increasing scarcity of natural resources. 
This is where civil society must be involved in defining what is important today and defining what we should be measuring. Ladies and gentlemen, for many years, the SC has stressed the importance of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development as a global, comprehensive and positive economic, social and environmental contract of shared responsibility to commit to a path towards sustainable human well-being within planetary boundaries. In fact, we are convinced that the 2030 Agenda has to become the overarching strategy that you should embrace for the next decade. It is a win-win agenda that looks towards the future. The SCE, our House of European Civil Society, is firmly committed to a sustainable euro based on three inseparable pillars, the economic one, the social one, and the environmental one. Current transition can be perceived as a treat. Look at what happens in France when a special tax on, uh, on fuel was established but they are also a clear opportunity for those who know how to seize them, reconciling employers, workers, and citizens. Take, for example, the circular economy, the batteries, electric cars, renewable energy, or the replacement of plastic single use. These are all key examples of the markets where the fight for competitiveness, growth, and decent jobs will take place. Also for workers, the sustainable agenda is a win-win perspective because it is the best firewall against social inequalities that I can think could be the social contract for the 21st century. The adoption last 30th of January by the Commission of the reflection paper on sustainable development goes clearly in that direction, although it's only a very modest first step. Sure, as I say to the first Vice President, Far Timmermans, more could have been done, but I sincerely salute this effort, uh, and I know how difficult it was in the Commission to arrive to, this, uh, to, a, to a common sharing of this agenda, it is uh, uh, an open a window of opportunity to further advance the sustainable development agenda. And I also to underline that the reflection paper quite rightly pointed out also the possibility of creating a mechanism to report and monitor the progresses of SDGs in the framework of the European semester. So, if we want to be consistent with all this, we should put the European semester, the good and working machine, at the service of the agenda of the future, the sustainable agenda. Making sustainable development a priority and translating the SDG into policy that can foster the European competitiveness, increase solidarity, and improve the well-being of our people is the best chance that EU has to reconnect with its citizens and give us a strong, cohesive, and sustainable growth for the future of us all. The EU semester should consider a scoreboard of the Agenda 2030 for sustainable Europe, including data, on competitiveness, growth, employment, and environment. This should be our ambition, not only to add some point to the agenda. Right now, we have the semester agenda for structural and budgetary issues concerning growth and competitiveness, and recently strengthened also some social point, but with very little reference to sustainable issue. We have to give the 2030 agenda issue a more prominent role in the European semester in the year to come. This semester is the engine that works, so we have to work on the content and not to invent a new framework. And we have this content, the Agenda 2030. The SE recommended last October that the sustainability check should be built into the annual growth survey to prevent negative and strengthen positive social, environmental, and governance impact of proposed economic and fiscal policies and programs. The European semester granted specific recommendation should take also into account the Member States' Sustainable Development Recommendation. We have also proposed to rename the Annual Growth Survey as the Annual Sustainable Growth Survey. This would recognize the importance of climate change, the importance of sustainability of finite resources, and the safeguarding of the interest of the economy and of the future generation. The survey 
should therefore be based on a broad Eurostat data, including health, welfare, education, sustainability, and other parameters in addition to the usual GDP and other classic indicators. So let us proceed from today, important event here under the Romanian presidency, to convey a strong and precise message to the future Commission and the future European Parliament. The cement stair is a governance tool that works well, and it should be put to good use. After the Lisbon strategy and the EU 2020 strategy of the present decade, the next horizontal and holistic EU strategy should be a strategy for the European semester that takes due account of the sustainability issue. I understand that also the Romanian presidency is keen to moving forward this agenda. And for the SC, I can assure that we are ready to fight for this. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Jacquier, for your remarks and also a comprehensive view of the situation. It gives me now the pleasure to, to give the floor to Her Excellency Mrs. Gabriela Crezzu, Senator and Chairwoman of the European Affairs Committee of the Senate and Chairwoman of the Joint Special Committee of the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate for coordinating the parliamentary activities necessary for the preparation of the Romanian Presidency of the Council of the European Union. Madam Senator, you have the floor. Thank you very much. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, any rank you have, dear friends, my poor English is fitting better than my remarkable rich Romanian vocabulary for addressing the issue I'd like to address today and for touching uh, those being targeted by my intervention. So I would follow um, the former speaker speaking English. The critical realism of my presentation, it is only an attempt of making a fair an honest diagnosis of the European semester, its reason of being and its functioning without any drop of Euroscepticism. I am actually a European Federalist dreaming for a better and united union. There are three main instruments of intervention for achieving a common purpose at the European level. Common regulations, common budgeting, that means the budget and the associated financial instruments, and coordinating national policies during European semester. Coordination, it is the weakest instrument, even weaker than 1% European budget, and then sometimes difficult enforcing of European legislation. This doesn't mean that e economic coordination is useless, but it could have worked better if not facing at least three structural problems, national capacity, implementation, and especially diagnosis, both uh, as economic paradigm and as indicators. The European semester was a good idea after the crisis, moving from ex post interventions to solve imbalances to ex ante coordination, trying to prevent them. And it was a necessary idea as well, being the total lack of political will for fixing once forever European monetary system. Euro, it is only a common currency in an area with wide disparities, acting some, somehow as a sponge, absorbing added values from poorer to richer countries. But however, it doesn't matter common or single currency. Euro, it is a trust-based currency as all other currencies. Trust is a very variable in indicator and uh, requests for automatic stabilizers to maintain both economic and social equilibrium. Or member states don't have any more all these instruments at the national level after transferring competencies, opening borders, giving up national currencies, and being the mobility of everything, capital, goods and services, human beings. Too little it has been done uh, to put something instead. Solidarity instruments are still poor. A mutualization of risk is still absent. ECB, European Central Bank, 
is forbidden to finance public debt. We, with the European semester, however, we have noticed the change of paradigm from solidarity and common actions at the European level towards every state responsibility. This trend, it would be very good for adapting measures to concrete situations, but state's responsibility cannot be greater than its capacity to intervene and control results. It, can, it cannot be smaller as well. I don't defend here governments. And uh, to be clear as well, all member states would be affected in the case of a big crisis, not only Eurozone members. Non-Euro members, as Romania, have a high level of integration, Euroization, mostly uh, European banking capital, high share of trading within the internal market, and only temporary derogations from Euro. Even when there is capacity, we have to deal with weak political will for implementation. All theory of economic governance disregards a fact. We live, however, in democratic societies where the legitimacy and power are dependent on public support. The governments represent different political interests acting based on their political color. As neoliberal thinking uh, has been shaping the majority of our uh, government decisions in the Union, it is not surprising that uh, when it comes about CCRs uh, have been implemented in a very imbalanced manner. In 2018, the recommendations convergent with neoliberal thinking has been implemented, have been implemented 85% uh, those related to public education or social policies have been left aside, excepting those uh, asking for cutting existing rights. Only 7% have been implemented. It is not a big success. I could add, uh, add I'm sorry, the lack of consistency uh, in some of country-specific recommendations uh, with uh, recommendations undermining each other possibility of um, implementation in the same page. But I have no time because I like to draw attention once again that we are facing a diagnosis problem. Since the beginning, European semester fell into the trap of the same wrong diagnosis as the crisis itself. That means making debtors, especially public ones, responsible for the irrational exuberance before the crisis, creditors have been exonerated of responsibility, making the fiscal indiscipline of the states responsible for the crisis itself exonerating markets. And we have been taught that the economy is facing a supply shortage, not a demand deficit. Only once I have to admit, in 2015, the annual growth survey mentioned the demand gap, but the idea disappeared next year. As a consequence of this diagnosis, the treatment was clear. Fiscal consolidation, structural reform to uh, boost supply. Private sector indebtedness and responsibility haven't taken, it, taken into account. Moreover, since 2015, we've Juncker plan, a new idea has been introduced. There are bad investments, public direct investments which are to be avoided for undermining fiscal consolidation, and good investments, privately driven, but using public money as incentives and guarantees. That means a pri privatization of the major public works and the socialization of the pub public risk related to them. Again, markets enter it more and more public sphere. But good and services have to be sold to become someone income. Revenues must to be spent to become effective demand. In this context, the relationship between wages and profits is essential. 
those behind the European semester ignored this aspect, not having understood, perhaps, that inequality kills the markets. At this moment, the main macroeconomic imbalance is represented by labor income capital income ratio and the concentration of wealth. We face a distribution problem. This is not only a social issue uh, left-wing parties or trade unions uh, could be interested in. This imbalance leads to an inappropriate investment consumption ratio, which is key for long-term growth. This imbalance is a global one, and exporting its negative effects, it is not possible anymore as it was in the past. Only if we discover perhaps some markets on the moon. Or this indicator cannot be found among the 14 indicators evaluating macroeconomic imbalances. Not only the ideology of European semester needs to be challenged. We have an economy without borders, single market, almost completed. And it is an achievement, but indicators with borders, national indicators. For measuring convergence, we use uh, GDP. But GDP shows what is registered within the borders of a country, not what remains in that country. A recent study uh, brought significant data showing that returns and repatriation of profits are higher, actually, than money entering in treasuries. Uh, that means structural funds minus uh, European budget contribution. For all group of member states, uh, as Romania, new, new member states. And GDP is misleading, and because of being focused on the present, neglecting stocks of assets the wealth of that society, which is a prediction of its future development potential. Uh, this one is linked the future with wealth, including human capital and less with GDP. When analyzing the structure of revenues, we see another worrying reality in spite of the growth. Profit convergence is excellent. In Romania, it is over 80% of the European average. Households income, on the other hand, is only somewhere at 32%. We promote a very limited understanding of discipline, actually undermining public sector and services. MTOs and mastery criteria are a kind of sacred things. Or during the crisis, the states are respectful of this criteria far from being protected, have suffered the negative effects at an undeserved level. Think of Ireland and Spain. Those far less attentive to those criteria easily coped with the crisis. That means we have wrong targets to achieve. Perhaps the balance of payments, it would be much more rele relevant since the surplus of one represents the deficit of another. And paying attention to private sector, its high level of debt, and the structure of its investment, it is compulsory needed as well. By now, European semester has chosen to practice a kind of Marxist approach, thinking that it is nothing to be done for saving capitalists, the markets, from their own excesses with democratic means, I mean. In spite of being a left-winger myself, I'm pessimistic with this approach because no progressive revolution is knocking at the door. Instead, violence showed again its ugly face in our society we haven't expected. Which solutions? Reforming the structural reforms in order to improve allocation, a tax policy reform um, for a more efficient redistribution, especially um, firm measures to combat tax, uh, tax optimization with special focus on digital taxation 
giving us up, I'm sorry, austerity and encouraging public investment for providing public goods and services, which is the main reason of public institutions' legitimacy, including European institutions. Completing European Monetary Union, having an European budget worthy of the name, and building a an European social pillar. We need as well to keep the best balance between markets and states. As it is now, markets are controlling states, and instead of a social market economy, as written in the treaties, we would get more and more a market economy and a market society. So, European semester success, it is not about uh, taking or not the pills, about those implementing or not country-specific recommendations. It is about the pills themselves and their capacity of treating, of treating diseases. And it is about giving up an illusion that in an economy without borders, a member state could protect itself for long when other member states collapses. We are glad, however, that with the launch of European semester, we have started a stronger dialogue between European institutions and between member states and European institutions generally. It is a good basis for building better, more consistent policies in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Senator, for your remarks. We move forward, uh, giving the floor uh, to His Excellency Mr. Rob Jonkman. He's the Vice President of the Commission for Economic Policy, European Committee of the Regions, in order to highlight the roles of the regions and cities in the implementation of the EU public policies. Mr. Jonkman is rapporteur for the COR's opinion on the topic recommended by Romania as presidency of the Council of the European Union, the European semester and cohesion policy, aligning structural reforms with long-term investment. Mr. Jonkman, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Chair. Um, Good morning, dear Excellencies uh, and uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. Um, the European uh, Committee of the Regions is very grateful uh, to the Romanian uh, Presidency for being invited in this conference. So thank you, uh, Vice Prime Minister, uh, for that. And um, uh, this is a very good and timely initiative um, of the Romanian Presidency ahead of the European elections in, um, and in the year um, in which an agreement uh, on the new MFF uh, will have to be reached. It's also the first year in which the Commission presents uh, in the country reports of the European semester specific recommendations for investments with the cohesion funds for the next pro programming uh, period. The EU needs to get closer to the citizens in order to increase ownership of his policies and to make them more effective effectiveness being favored by increased ownership. Commissioner Dombrovskis mentioned a maximum degree of ownership. Well, thank you for that, that's a good point. The European semester uh, certainly needs a boost. We cannot keep complaining on the state of implementation of structural reforms. Therefore, to the opinion of the Committee of the Regions, I will call it from now on COR, uh, it's time to increase ownership uh, of the European semester by involving regions and cities better in uh, this process. And one of the key problems is that the semester uh, with its recommendations on structural reforms has come to be seen uh, as an end in itself. It cannot be. The European semester was created as a coordination mechanism to pursue the Europe 2020 goals. And today, it should set what countries need to do every year to pursue the sustainable development goals based on the st strategy uh, the EU is currently discussing. The perspective the COR brings in the European semester is that of a territorial dimension coupled with the principles of partnership and multi-level governance. 
Policies should be flexible enough to take into account disparities within countries, which are often wider than those between countries. And that is why the goals and targets of the EU strategy towards the SDGs, uh, both in the long run and in the yearly um, European semester, cannot be set uh, in a top-down manner, as uh, was the case for the European 2020 strategy. Rather, rather <coughs> they should be the outcome of a mixed top-down and bottom-up process involving all levels of government and relevant stakeholders in the light of the principles of partnership and multi-level governance. And this approach would increase ownership of the European semester since local and regional authorities are those closest to the citizens and enjoy their trust more than any other level of government. And it would increase effectiveness uh, of the semester since it would result in policies better tailored to each portion of the European uh, territory. And in this respect, the COR welcomes the annual growth survey for 2019. For the first time, this annual growth survey includes a territorial dimension, but it's just the first attempt. This takes me to my main point, which addresses two questions. First, how to involve the local and regional authorities as full partners in the European semester process. And second, uh, how to ensure consistency and coordination between the two policy processes of the European semester and the cohesion policy. These questions lay at the heart uh, of the request that the COR received from the Romanian government in October last year of an opinion on the links between cohesion policy and the European semester. In particular, the Romanian government wonders whether, under the new uh, rules, um, linking cohesion policy to the European semester, local and regional authorities would still be able to use uh, cohesion policy funds to address the specific challenges. The draft opinion uh, of which I'm the rapporteur was adopted by uh, unanimity uh, by the COR Econ Commission in February and is scheduled for a final adoption at the plenary session in about uh, six days from today. To involve local and regional authorities in the European semester, the opinion is very likely to re reiterate the COR proposal of a code of conduct similar to that used for the cohesion policy. And this code of conduct uh, would aim at uh, substantially aligning member states to the good practices currently adopted in some countries. A good example is my country, the Netherlands, in which a code of conduct ensures that regions and municipalities are involved both in the semester and cohesion policy process. This is the only way, I think, to avoid that European semester raise a substantial subsidiarity issue by dictating policies in areas covered by the cohesion policy and in which EU competences uh, are often, very often shared with countries uh, cities and regions. The Commission agrees on the need to involve all levels of government in the European semester, but it thinks it should not suggest uh, how they should do it. The Commission thinks this, uh, seems to think that a code of conduct would not be useful, would be invasive, and would risk infringing the subsidiarity principle. The COR proposal would not be invasive. The code of conduct should simply set some results that member states would remain free to achieve as they see fit. And as I said already, it is rather the current situation which risks posing a subsidiarity problem. We hope that the challenge I have been describing and our proposal to address it will be given the attention they deserve in the coming months. In the meantime, this approach should be pragmatically implemented on the ground as soon as possible, because the Commission has already presented in the uh, Country Report 2019 its uh, ideas about future investments with the cohesion funds. In fact, the process uh, on aligning investments in the framework of cohesion uh, policy is already on its way, but in some member states, local and regional authorities are not involved in this process. In this respect, the COR is grateful to Vice President Dombrovskis for his availability to include representatives of local and regional authorities in the visits, visits he is paying to the member states to present the country reports. 
The COR has encouraged EU cities and uh, regions to take this opportunity by contacting the European semester officers in their countries, as suggested by the Vice President. And we hope that this is the starting point of a strong and a permanent involvement of all levels of government in the process leading to the identification of the mix of investment and the structural reforms most suited to the needs of the European territories. I like to end now because I'm the obstacle between you and the coffee break. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Youngman. Actually, I am the one between, so uh, you'll have to uh, stay a little bit more and, and, uh, and uh, share with me the final remarks. Uh, at the end of the opening session, I would like to thank once again to the speakers for the added value of the information and arguments presented to the audience. I am convinced that these introductory speeches have been able to set the framework for the detailed debates to be held in the following sessions, focusing on current topics relevant to the central topics of today's conference, that is, fostering quality investment and the closer link of the European semester with the European funds and the social dimension of the process. The closing session will then give us the opportunity to emphasize the results of the discussions held in the previous ones and to discuss the possible future developments of the European semester. Among the speakers will be members of the Romanian government, representatives of the European Commission, stakeholders, as well as representatives from the EU member states. The idea of organizing in Bucharest an international conference dedicated to this wide-ranging issue appeared last year in the context of increasingly intense discussions at European level on the strength of the link between the semester and the EU funds. We appreciate very much the support of the European Commission that showed us its entire openness towards organizing this event. We believe that as we approach the 10th anniversary of the European semester, the Romanian presidency of the EU Council is an appropriate time to have such a debate, bringing together a wide, a wide range of actors directly concerned. We wish this event to be the beginning of an in-depth and productive dialogue likely to generate ideas for improving the process. I agree with the statement of Mr. Uh, Vice Prime Minister Viorel Stefan that a greater awareness of the importance of this semester, both at European and national level, could contribute significantly to the achievement of the objectives of the process through an open and honest debate. Since its launch until present, the European semester became more and more complex and was characterized by the continuous adaptation of its role to new circumstances in an attempt to respond adequately to the numerous challenges facing the Union as a whole. During the ongoing European semester, the emphasis is on fostering investment, ensuring broader synergies between the coordination of economic and cohesion policies, on implementing well-designed reforms and promoting appropriate budgetary policies. Thus, the element of novelty consists in highlighting the importance of assessing investment needs with a focus on priori prioritizing them in order to guide programming decision for the next multi-annual financial framework with the investments needed in each member state foreseen in a new annex to the country reports for 2019. Taking into consideration the increasing complexity of the European semester process and anticipating the interconnection of national structural reforms measures with the future multi-annual financial framework of the European Union, Romania's approach will remain focused on increasing the quality of reforms in order to reduce the disparities as compared to other member states of the European Union. One of the important tasks of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the annual elaboration of the National Reform Programme with, with the support of the responsible institutions, over 30 ministries and other public authorities. The commitments that will be including in the National Reforms Programme 2019 lead us to have a coordinating and strategic approach to them that will be materialized into sustainable and efficient solutions. Practically, the results achieved so far have been uh, have to be strengthened and we believe that the implementation of structural reform needs to be continued in order to increase the level um, of competitive, uh, competitiveness and boost economic growth. Finally, I express my hope that we will continue to have an open and coherent dialogue leading to notable results and conclusions of the conference. Thank you very much for your interest. The working session will start after a 15 minutes break.